In this video, I wanna walk you through this very clean yet powerful keyboard and tracks rig setup that I just assembled here for our church. This is a combination of some incredible technology, both on the software and hardware side of things. So if you're a keyboardist at your church, and especially if you're a keyboardist who happens to be the music director in charge of cueing the band and triggering the click and tracks, you're gonna wanna watch this video. My name is Jake Gosselin with Churchfront. We're here to equip you with innovative solutions for thriving ministry. Don't forget to check out the free Churchfront toolkit linked below this video it lists out all of our favorite recommendations for gear and software for modern worship ministry at the heart of this keyboard and tracks rig is my macbook pro it has the m4 pro chip inside of it and 24 gigabytes of ram i think i also have a terabyte of hard drive space as well I really don't think I'm pushing this computer anywhere near its limits. So I do think you could go with a less powerful MacBook Pro or potentially even a more specced out MacBook Air to accomplish this type of setup. The next essential component of this system has to do with the infrastructure that we integrated here at this church with our network. We are using Dante Audio Networking. So rather than needing to use physical audio interfaces like a Scarlett or a track rig that plug into the computer over USB. I'm using one USB-C to ethernet connection. I am using the StarTech adapter here. It's really important to have the right NIC, N-I-C for network interface card device on your computer. Um, when you're using Dante because it doesn't like to play well with all of the different adapters out there. So this one, we've tested it a lot. It works really well with Dante Audio. So the app that I'm looking at right now is Dante Controller. This is where I can see all of the devices that are on our Dante network. So this is how we can send audio to and from my computer, to our mixing console, to our system processor for our PA. We have some microphones that send Dante. Not gonna spend all day on it here. We have videos about Dante if you want to learn more about that and setting up the right infrastructure. But that's a key audio tool that we're using in this setup to keep it as simple and powerful as it is. So on the top here, you can see under transmitters, we have my MacBook Pro. And if I actually go to the uh, device info setting here, you can see it a little bit better. So this is the information for my device. If I go to the transmit side, I have 16 outputs set up from this MacBook Pro for my keyboard outs and my click guide and all of our stereo tracks we're sending out of this computer. So it's like I have a 16 output audio interface and it gives us a ton of flexibility of how I'm sending sounds from my laptop to our front of house mixing console. The other thing to keep in mind is do you have a mixing console that can handle that channel count? We are using the Allen & Heath Avantis Solo console at our church, which has 64 input channels on it. And the size of our system with mics and instruments and all of these Dante signals I'm sending to the console, it works using this amount of channels, but we, we are kind of maxing out the console. So you just gotta be mindful. Does your console itself have enough channels to handle all of the keys and tracks signals that you need to send to it. So this is Dante Controller. That's the app that allows me to route my Dante audio, but the application that's actually functioning as the interface is Dante Virtual Sound Card, which you can see right here. It is active with 16 ins and 16 outs, only 10 milliseconds of latency. And then I have my Dante network interface card plugged in. And we do have our Dante network set up on a dedicated VLAN uh, indicated here by the dot 40 subnet. This is the type of stuff that we set up for all of our clients when we build a networking infrastructure for them. And hopefully you can begin to see if you have the right integration, especially of a network infrastructure, it can really empower you, the musicians in your band. A lot of you might think networking has nothing to do with music, has a whole lot to do with music today with modern AV. So when I bring my laptop, which is going to have my keys and track software on it, I set it down, I plug in the networking cable, I plug in USB for the keyboard, and then I plug in power and it's ready to rock. I'm not having to fiddle with a physical hardware audio interface. And by the way, if you're a Churchfront Premium member, you can access our Networking 101 course to really help you understand the fundamentals of this to begin setting up a system like this at your church. So now I can play audio from my keyboard and then I'll pull up my keys channels on the console right here. And now you could see 
the audio is coming into the keys channel. If I go to my preamp, it's using IO port, which is the Dante card at the Avantis, and it's pulling that audio into these sockets on the console. Now let's talk about how I'm creating keyboard sounds. The keyboard I'm using here is the SL88 by Studio Logic. It's a really great quality, great value MIDI keyboard with weighted keys. I just like the simplicity of the build. I actually like how it's magnetic on top too, because when I set my iPad here, it actually sticks to the top of the keyboard itself. So the Studio Logic MIDI keyboard has a USB connection from the back of the keyboard into a dongle. I just use some uh, dual lock underneath the computer here. I have a USB-C adapter and it makes that USB connection. And now this keyboard is controlling the Sunday Sounds Sunday Keys app. It's a very powerful app, runs on Mac and iPad. The easiest way to get incredible keyboard patch sounds for your band. It can be as simple or as complex as you would like. I'm not a professional keys player. I can fake it till I make it. I took a few keyboard classes in college and I can play worship keys at a very simple level. So this is a great app for me because I just wanna have a great sounding grand piano. I have the S key grand V2 sound right now. Sounds great to me for what I need for playing the set this week at church. If I wanted to though, I could add in other things like pads. Other like synth leads. There's all sorts of patches and things that you can load into this software. Again, very powerful, but I recommend if you're using it for the first time, just use it as a nice uh, simple piano interface. And the app itself, uh, there's different options. It's an annual subscription. I think the one I purchased was around $100. What's great about Sunday Keys is I can go into the settings and then I can go to audio. This is where I tell it, hey, I want to have my audio interface set as my system interface, which is Dante right now, or better yet, I should just select Dante Virtual Sound Card right here, just so it knows don't follow whatever the system settings are. If I change my system back to my speakers on my laptop, it'll stay with Dante. Uh, I can also adjust the buffer size. It's working fine at 128 to have low latency. Then when I go to the flex routing page right here, I can actually route the outputs of Sunday Keys to outputs on my Dante virtual sound card. So you can actually see I've got up to uh, 10 that I can use right now. If I upgrade my license of Sunday Keys to a more pro level, I could have 16 outs coming from my keyboard rig. For some of you, you might like that. For me, completely overkill. Here in our setup, uh, we dedicated two stereo channels at our console for keys one and keys two. So if we wanna have keys separated from the pad sounds that are coming from Sunday keys, I could do that. So the piano sound would be output one and two. The pad, I could go in here and I could select three and four if I wanna do that. I'm not a piano player, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use the pad sounds coming from playback app, which you'll see in a moment. And that is how we are creating keyboard sounds and integrating them into our sound system. Next up, we have the playback app by Multitracks. You guys probably heard about this before. It's a very popular app and it is very easy to set up your backing tracks, run a click and guide for your band. You can do automation from this as well. And as an MD, it gives you lots of flexibility to skip around songs, be a little bit more spontaneous in worship while playing with tracks. So if I go into my settings here in playback, if I go to my audio device, I wanna make sure I have Dante Virtual Sound Card selected, and then I can go to my buses, and then from here, I'm able to assign my outs from playback to the right outs on Dante Virtual Sound Card. I recommend taking your time to label your outputs on Dante Virtual Sound Card like I did here. So now when I'm looking at transmitters, this is my computer, one, two, three, and four. Those are for my keys one and keys two outputs from Sunday Keys. And then click is on five, guide is on six. That's why when I go to my playback app here, click is five, guide is six. And then I did tracks, melody, we just call them kind of like all the tracks like guitars and synths and um, horns. We put those in this bus right here. That's gonna be the next group, which is seven and eight. So over here, I have all of those items bust to seven and eight out of playback. Nine and 10 is for our percussion or any more rhythmic backing tracks. And then 11 and 12 is gonna be the pad player within playback. So now you can see, this is the Avantis software. So you can see the audio coming into it. I have my various buses that we set up in playback, a stereo one for tracks melody, tracks rhythm, and then we got tracks pad. And then we've got click and guide cues over here. Those are just mono 
channels. Another really cool thing about playback as a keys player and MD is I can use the Chart Builder app and it's gonna sync up with playback. And as you saw, it just moved by itself as the song progresses along. You young worship leaders out there don't know how good you guys got it these days. I remember three ring binders and people flipping through pages. It is so slick using playback with Chart Builder. And now as a keys player, I really don't have to think about my charts at all. It automatically just advances with the song. The other really great tool for someone who's a keys player MD is a talkback mic. So this is just a SE V7 microphone. I think it's actually highly recommended by Lee Fields, an incredible mix engineer. And I added to it a Daddario IR mic mute. So what's cool about this device is it has a infrared sensor on the front of it. And we've used things like Optigates as well. It's a similar one. It's also like more than double the price. So Daddario, props to them for coming out with one that's a little less expensive. You can feel the build quality isn't quite as nice as Optigate, but it still works pretty well. So when I move away from the mic, it is off. It automatically mutes. But then when I come close to the mic, it'll turn on. See the little, the little red sensor there? And that's important just because you want your band members to like really hear your talkback mic, but when you're not talking, you want it to be muted. Um, so they're not getting a bunch of bleed from sound from the stage. Fortunately, we've got a good drum enclosure. Um, but especially for those of you, if you didn't have a drum enclosure and you want a talk back mic, you really need a auto mic mute like this that'll clean up everybody's in-ear mixes. Which brings me to another significant part of this setup is the in-ear monitor solution. So at this church, we're using Allen and Heath mixing and we have the MEU and the ME1 personal mixers. So we can have up to 10 of these things on stage. We've got six of them right now, which generally covers all of our backline musicians. This is a very powerful personal mixer. So now I actually have all of my mix groups set up here. This is what it's like for everybody's mixer. So they can easily go into a group of things and turn up or down individual instruments. And then down here, I can actually set up my own keys as a keyboard player. Um, if I want to have quick access to my keyboard, my talkback mic, and maybe the click track, that's how I configured it for me right here. So these sound incredible, so long as your audio is captured and processed uh, well at the mixing console. It's one data connection powered over uh, ethernet from the MEU, and then I have a headphone extender here that goes into my in-ear monitor headphones. Finally, my favorite thing about this setup is how clean it is. If you do some simple cable management with some dual lock Velcro, or you've got some zip ties, you can make sure all the cables look great coming down from the piano to your computer, and then back to your other IO that you might have on stage for audio and networking. And it just really cleans up the rig. As a keys player, I don't feel like I have a bunch of stuff in front of me uh, or in my way. It's convenient having a laptop stand here for my laptop to access that uh, with good ergonomics. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and you can take away a tip or two to improve the setup at your church. Let me know what questions you have down below. Like I said, I'm gonna list out my favorite devices here in the church front toolkit. It's gonna to be on its own dedicated page for keyboards and tracks rig. So it'll be one convenient place for you to access this information at churchfront.com. Just click that toolkit link down below this video. Thank you for watching. Share this video with a friend in your ministry if you think they'll find it helpful and we'll see you guys next time.